Okay, so hello, Nick. It's great to have you again here today, and I'm really fortunate that uh, there's so much happening in the recruitment uh, industry at the moment. Um, and one of the things I'm really interested in is what employers are looking for. Yeah, that that's interesting. Yeah, because the. You know, although every every job is different, uh, there's always a few basic elements that every organisation looks for when they're recruiting. Uh, and I've, I've made a list of possibly five of the most important things. I mean, so many things. Uh, but I, the initial one, uh, I believe, is a willingness to learn. Uh, because what, no matter what job you're searching for, you'll need to learn at least a few elements about your new job role. Uh, whether sure. that's a new process, uh, new technology or systems. Uh, and generally, when, when the employees have been taking on an onboarding process in their early days, uh, they will be uh, introduced to new technologies. So showing a willingness to learn uh, and some element of adaptability is a great sign for any employer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, you've got far more tech, technology skills than I have, so <laughs> any, any job that I will be going for... <laughs> I'd have to show a willingness to learn then. Uh, and on the other hand, the fact that you've learned so many different processes and things like that shows that you have got that, you know, that willingness to learn anyway. So Yeah, uh, but if an employer was to ask me what's on TV tonight, all I know is there's been football going on. And I'm not sure about any other the soaps. So the soaps is not an area I'm clued up on anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, that maybe leads on to the next one, which is communication skills. Okay, <laughs> if you sat watching um... telly every night, you might be losing your communication skills. <laughs> yes, indeed. And you can debate whether I have communication skills, folks. If you're watching this video, I'm, in your mind, one of us might have better communication skills or the other. One of us might actually be the person that you relate to. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, we're, we're all different. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and in any, any job role, uh, communication is key. Uh, that involves verbal and written communication. Uh, alongside, sometimes more importantly, the ability to listen. Uh, and that leads on to following directions and providing feedback. So, uh, you, you know, the ability to show good communication skills starts right at the beginning of the application process. You know, when you're mm -hmm. writing out your your CV and things like that, making sure it's precise, checking for any wording errors or anything like that, uh, and also making sure that it's relevant and, and not dragging on too long. So, uh, and if you're you know, concerned yeah. about your CV, <coughs> who, how would you actually sort your CV out as a communication issue? Do you think there's certain templates out there which you can, you know, draw reference to? Uh, such as Zest. I mean, we're here to help people if we want, and that would be a, a cost-free sort of service. Yeah. We're quite willing to speak to people on that. And we um, have a network that Zest is connected to with recruiters um, that regularly do check this out. And as you're probably aware, folks, this is not going just out on Facebook. This also goes out on LinkedIn today. So that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and you've got certain professional out there who are copywriters, CV writers. Uh, obviously, to make the business viable, they do have to make charges. But now and again, you'll find people will do something for nothing. You know, there's always people willing to give them the time uh, to mm -hmm. help support people. So, uh, yeah, good mediums to be on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, and it's always nice to have a good network of people to share that that with and there's always somebody willing to help i find so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the third point i've got down is ambition now often get asked you know what are your ambitions and things like that but it, it's not that it's more a matter of showing the interviewer that you're going to take interest in things so if you if you're able to show a passion possibly for the industry or role at hand say if you're a computer programmer and you've got a passion for computers, uh, but you're going into a business where you're going to be processing computer stuff, it would really help if you do show that passion for your, for your computing, uh, even if just through a, a level of inquisitiveness uh, or curiosity. Uh, that Having that passion initially will help you then maybe 
go on and progress through that company. So they will look at that and think, yeah, this might be the difference between this individual and the last one. They have actually got a passion for this. Uh, so uh, understanding the company that you're looking at, that you're interviewing for or sending a CV in for, the history of the company and how it operates, all this information can be learned from its website. Uh, a lot yep. of them nowadays have their own social media accounts. Yep. And again, as, as we keep referencing, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I don't know. I, would you see it in the same realms, John? That's usually the best. Well, I would to say LinkedIn has its advantages. Um, there is also the aspect of Facebook. There's also yeah. potentially worthwhile checking out the people behind the business through LinkedIn. <coughs> and don't forget, people use hashtags a lot, and your search can interconnect with a hashtag, uh, which may well help you finding out more information. So there's um, Twitter. Uh, some businesses use Twitter to talk about their business. But it's also, you can find out to some degree, um, I mean, I, I understand websites to some degree. Um, you can, if you're looking at technology, if you're looking at the, say, a website development, it's probably worthwhile actually taking a look behind the scenes of the website to actually understand how it's been put together before you go into that interview. If, if, if websites are your thing, and many of you will probably know how to do that, and if you don't, then please, by all means, make contact and I will spill the beans. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're rather than me, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, folks, today um, this is not being broadcast in the usual way because six minutes beforehand there was an issue, but we don't go into that. It's far more important for you to hear what Rick's got to say because his solutions are the solutions you need to know about. Now, are there any other points? Because I already I've got something I'm burning to ask Nick in a minute, but I want you to get the key bits he wants to deliver first. Well. It's uncanny this, and we haven't pre-rehearsed this, but the next point was honesty. <laughs> and you've been honest in saying we've had issues tonight, which we have, you could have left <laughs> it to that. But yeah, it goes it goes without saying that honesty, it's an integral part of any application process. Yeah. Uh, from the minute you start to apply uh, to the, the second you leave the interview room, uh, you, you've got to be as transparent and as honest as possible. Uh, and for heaven's sake, if you've made a mistake anywhere on your CV or anything like that, be honest about it. Hold your hand up and say, I've made a mistake. They'll think a lot more of you for doing that. Uh, and remember, people search through people's social media accounts nowadays. Some of them do. Uh, so make sure you've got the correct privacy settings on there, uh, you know, to make sure that they're not seeing anything you don't want them to see. Uh, no prospective employer really wants to see pictures of candidates on the nights out, uh, especially on a school night, as we say. But, uh, yeah, honesty, keeping good eye contact. I mean, uh, that's a big one for me. I've worked in the world of sales for the last 33 years. Uh, anybody who's not making eye contact with you instantly, you do lose trust in them. Uh, OK, now that's a good one to ask about. <clears throat> In the world of Zoom, the camera is often on the top of the laptop or in a different position to where it might be on a face-to-face -face meeting. Yeah. So and the, the eye contact that... challenge is slightly different because you're tempted to look at my screen and I'm tempted to look at your screen, which in actual fact means that we often aren't looking directly into the camera. Yeah. And if anybody's unaware where the camera is, it's that white light that's just looking at you right at the top of the screen. Uh, <laughs> Indeed, the fact that yes. we're, we're both spectacle wearers gives us a degree of license. Uh, <laughs> but again, yeah, if you, if you can maybe be aware of that, I would say, yeah, that's, mm. that's a very good thing. Because looking down is possibly a sign that, hang on, there's a, there's a lie coming here or a big fib. Uh, Mm -hmm. So maintaining the eye contact when you're giving the answers uh, and, and smile, smile. Don't. I know it's tense and I know it's one of those things that nobody wants to do. It's like going to the dentist, you know, it's, an interview can be daunting, but enjoy it. 
another thought comes to mind as an interview <coughs> can be posture, body posture. Now we're very fortunate that the half of our bodies are not visible on this call. <laughs> what Only saying, the John? top half is visible normally on the Zoom. In my yeah. instance, the backdrop, which may be quite concerning for some people on that Zoom, may also be important. Now you might be going for a face-to-face -face meeting or you might be invited initially onto a Zoom call to have that meeting. Do you have any sort of thoughts on that as well in, in terms of presentation, yeah. etc.? Yeah, what I would say is if, if you have got a Zoom account or anything like that, just go, go into meetings a, a good half an hour before your actual meeting. You can then have a look at what's going to appear on the screen. If there's anything in the background that you think doesn't look right there, uh, just change it. Or if you want to dress things at the back, if you're going for a job role that's maybe in sort of design or creative, uh, put something in the background that makes, you know, employers think, oh, yeah, they like nice, fine things, you know, a fine bit of art or something like that. Uh, it, it, it does add. It really does add to the, to, you know, to what you're doing. Uh, don't put anything that's going to be too distracting or else uh, they might miss some value points that you come through with. But, yeah, if you've got any dirty washing hanging up or anything behind you, I would say that uh, that wouldn't be a very good starting point. No. That, that These are all reason. interesting things. They can make a difference on, on, on the initial thought process. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, maybe helps as well with the, the last point to which I would say is confidence. Uh, go into it with some inner confidence. Uh, it does help the interviewers, you know, feel relaxed in the actual interview. If if they've maybe before the meeting, just had a bit of a, a chill out, have a have a cup of, relax a bit, you know, try and take your mind off what's what's coming along. Make sure everything's prepared, uh, and then the the fine balance is being confident, but not then being overconfident. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can come across as being somebody who might be very difficult to handle if you do across, come across too confident. They might think, oh gosh, we're going to have a problem training these people that they think they know it all. But if you just get that level right, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be there for you. So uh, be self-assured in your opinions and your statements. Uh, stick by whatever you, you feel to be right. Uh, don't get into any arguments or anything like that. But, you know, if somebody asks you a question and you say, well, I, I believe the, the true way of doing that is to say, you know, be honest and tell people that this is the way it is. That yeah. that then is showing your honesty and it's showing your confidence. Indeed. If it's, if, you know, if the company that you're joining doesn't want you to be honest, do you want to be with that company? Uh, possibly not. No, um, I'd like to, today's been an interesting day. Now, for those who are older, they may have heard of uh, a gentleman called Wogan. Now, I suspect by Nick's smile, he actually has heard of somebody called Wogan. <laughs> We're talking about <clears throat> Terry Wogan. Terry has a son. Terry Wogan, the late Terry Wogan, has a son who was actually on Virgin Radio this morning. Now, what was interesting about it is he's a restaurateur. He deals with pizza. Okay. And, yeah, <clears throat> he has six outlets or something around London. Now, LinkedIn followers, if you're still with us, which I hope you are, and hopefully one or two of you are picking up on this today, um, this particular was, it was on Virgin rather than on BBC, which I thought, thought was quite interesting. And the, the Virgin Radio team had actually made contact with him, <coughs> actually text. But he's actually only opening up half his restaurants. He can only manage to open half the restaurants because he hasn't got the staff. Yeah. So at this moment in time, if you're looking at where the best opportunities might be, you may well take a look at the restaurant field uh, as an option whereas you might have been put off and I think previously we've talked about the the challenges of the different sectors certainly the catering sector 
is struggling with many people who were in the catering field because of the length of time they've had to wait to return to employment they've actually found new opportunities potentially or there have been other issues and uh, Mark Wogan who is the owner of this particular business actually turned around and admitted that was the greatest challenge that they had at the moment and he's yeah. a second person the Michelin star restauranter has also made the same comment both within the London area but if you're watching this from Manchester Birmingham Liverpool where we regularly post or Hull where we regularly post London obviously <clears throat> these are areas you might wish to think about if you're looking and wondering where the next stage is or what the future might be it's yeah. worth thinking about definitely yeah yeah we we've seen that that is an industry where they can't they just can't get the staff back chefs are like gold dust uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we have recruited some. I didn't. I never knew there was a specific pizza chef until we got asked to find some. Uh, we found some. Uh, I didn't know that specific job role uh, was there, but yeah, it's. Uh, we managed to fill those positions. We post nationally uh, on all the job platforms, so we're casting a big net to try and get those members of staff in. Uh, and you've got to do at the moment. There's lots of jobs out there. Lots of people wanting to fill those jobs. And it's just marrying them up, and yeah. uh, it it is a difficult process. But we're here to give some support and help. So if anybody is out there wanting that help and support, we'll work off any questions you've got, and we'll try and put you in touch with the right people to answer them for you. So those people who are watching from LinkedIn today or Facebook, and you're involved with the recruitment field because. This post will have been put within the job sections as well. <coughs> we do, <coughs> we're keen to talk to the recruiters to have you on board talking about the opportunities in your area. This is a real opportunity because we will share in groups uh, wherever, wherever the opportunities are just to get this message across. Um, we normally have it streamed. We haven't got it streamed tonight, but we have recorded it. Um, and, you know, Nick has always managed well he's, he's good isn't he he always manages to make sure that postify gets the message across which i think is absolutely brilliant so <laughs> if you're missing out by not joining this you're not joining in with nick here look what the opportunity you're missing out on so you know it's a great opportunity to talk about business needs etc as well as if you are somebody who's looking for work to come on board as well so thanks very much indeed for that nick that's been absolutely brilliant today thank you so much thanks for again. your time